Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing well. We're going to get into some really good news if you're a Chelsea fan today, some interesting news if you're a Man City fan today, and some devastating analysis if you're English. <laughs> because we're going to start off with that. What in the blue hell went down last night at Wembley? That was pathetic. Um, England lose 2-1 to Greece, right? First time in England's history that we've lost to Greece. And um, there was no David Beckham this time to, to sort us out in the last minute, was there? Um, if, you, if you remember, you remember. I, I, I'll never forget that day. That was majestic. But um, I could not believe what we witnessed yesterday. And you know what? It wasn't even a fluke. This is what's crazy. Greece weren't lucky. I genuinely thought that if Greece were going to get something, yeah, it would be, uh, it'd be a, a stupid amount of luck. You know, one opportunity, they win 1-0 and that's it. Like, Greece deserved the win, fully. Greece had three disallowed goals. It could have ended 5-1. <laughs> it could have been a joke. Why did it go down this way? Well, look... Um, I don't want to say Gareth Southgate has been validated here because he hasn't. But i got to give it to him here. He was definitely at home watching that game yesterday, telling his missus, you see, this is why I played defensive. Because the defence was non-existent. And it wasn't just that. Lee Carsley made some decisions, some, some tactical decisions here that... I don't even want to say blew my mind. Um, my brain almost imploded from it. it. What's Cole Palmer doing in deep midfield? I mean, like, <laughs> what's going on there? You know, he put Bellingham up front. At one point, it looked like Rice was heading up top. I'm like, what? he got everyone on the pitch, right? Rice, Foden, Palmer, Bellingham, uh, Saka. <laughs> Everyone's playing at the same time and there was no recognised striker. And the defence, talk about the defence, you know, an attacking defence. You know, Trent was on the pitch. The fullbacks were constantly heading up the pitch. It was like, yes, defence, we don't need that today. We don't need to defend. Don't know what that is. Don't want it. Um, and as a result, we got left absolutely exposed. Greece were hitting us on the break for fun. That is a game that Jose Mourinho would look at and look at Greece and go, I'm proud of you guys, <laughs> because that is exactly um, how you would want to set up if you're trying to play on the counter. It was just, it was so obvious too, man. And I have to be honest, look, I don't know what's going on with the Man City players when they play for England, but it's not it, yeah? John Stones, Rico Lewis, um, Foden... What happened to all of you? Every time they play for England, so what's going on? Rico Lewis, I'll cut some slack because he's, he's quite young and whatnot. But still, that defensive calamity for the second goal was on him. And that was a joke. What, what, what are you doing there, mate? What are you doing? <laughs> so look, Lee Carsley come out of the game afterwards and went, um, uh, basically, I can't wait to go back to the under-21s. <laughs> he's had enough. He's done. Um, look... Can we get a proper manager in, please? And um, can we end this experiment ASAP? And I understand he's in on an interim. He's been asked to just fill the void because he's the under-21 manager. Cool. I genuinely thought that he would be in the running for the job. He's basically put himself out of it now. He said, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to head back to, to the under-21s. Cool, mate. See you later. Go back to the under-21s. He was doing a good job with the, with the under-21s, but that's basically where it's all gonna it's all going to be for him. Um, England need to, the FA need to get someone in proper and um, stop messing around and, and get the best out of this team because last night was an absolute farce. Um, anyway, that's that. Now, to more happy matters when it comes to Chelsea Football Club. We, I, I said it yesterday after we saw the Women's Manager of the Month. Well, guess what? Guess what's happened? Guess what's happened? Official Enzo Maresca is the Premier League Manager of the Month for September. There it is. And happy, happy Manager of the Month to Enzo. Um, deserved. Completely deserved. So I do want to say this because it looks like... It doesn't look like. It is. Chelsea got a clean sweep. 
We got the women's manager, Sonia Bompasta, who got manager of the month. And Cole Palmer is player of the month. Yes, he is for the month of September. So Chelsea have a clean sweep. Ah, oh, I love to see it. I love to see it. That has made my Friday. That really has made my Friday. The last time we saw this was um, Thomas Tuchel. Well, for Enzo Maresca, the last Chelsea manager to get manager of the month was Thomas Tuchel. And like I said yesterday, I think the last time we had both man and woman getting the same award, I think it was Thomas Tuchel and Emma Hayes, if I'm not mistaken. But on top of that, player of the month. I hope, I hope after two long suffering years that the club is now heading in the right direction. I hope. I'm not saying it is. I'm saying I hope. And this has to continue. Just because it's happened for the month of September, it doesn't mean, oh, okay, great, we're done. No. October, November, December, the season, top four, trophies, title. That, that's where we need to be heading. That's, that's telling me we're going in the right direction. So uh, huge congratulations to everyone at Chelsea. Enzo, absolutely deserved. Sonia, absolutely deserved. Cole, absolutely, not just absolutely deserved, stupendously deserved. Um, so my club is heading in what looks like a decent direction so far. I'm very happy. Now, we got some news in terms of a player. Check this out. Reese James is due back in full training. All being well next week, hopefully. That's from Matt Law. I'm going to keep this brief and I'm going to keep this simple. It is last chance saloon. It is last chance saloon. I love Reese James. I think had it not been for injuries, I think he'd be the best right back in the world right now. He was heading in that direction already before it all kicked off. We remember. Let's not act like he wasn't. His body's let him down. But it can't continue. This is the highest level. This is the top level. This is the Premier League. This is Chelsea Football Club. I'm sorry. We can't. We can't just base it on sentiment. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, enough opportunity has been given for his body to adjust and recover and get back to its best. I think it would be right to keep, obviously, looking after him. But we have to be realistic for the sake of the team. Personally, if he gets injured after coming back, if he gets injured one more time, me? I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm done. And at that point, I would advocate for Gusto to be the main choice at the back. First choice. And I would advocate for Chelsea to go out and get themselves a brand new right back. Dip into the transfer market, get a right back. Um, I don't wish that. I want Reece James to come back because when he is at his best, he's unplayable. But we've got to be real here. We're not, we're not St. Thomas's Hospital. Do you know what I mean? Like, we, we can't just hang about. Thankfully, he's a Cobham graduate. Thankfully, he's come from the academy. He's not tec technically, he's not costing us anything. I'm glad. So this is what I'm saying. It'd be best to look after him, right? Don't just throw him away. But have contingency plans in place now. We've got to be realistic and we've got to have another right back here just in case. Uh, we've got to start looking, basically. But it's up now, that it's, it's down to Reese's body. Is it going to last? You know, the rumour is that Chelsea have actually given this a lot of time and they want to be sure and certain that when he comes back, there's no risk. Well, I think that tells us our answer then. If he does get injured, it's done. So... One last chance for Reese James as far as I'm concerned. Let's see where that's going to head. Let me know your thoughts on Reese James. What would you do? I'd love to know. And Man City. Big news coming out of here. This is interesting and I'll tell you why. So Man City's new director of football will be Portuguese director Hugo Viana. Exclusive story confirmed. As revealed on Tuesday, Viana was on top of City list and the agreement is now completed. Viana leaves Sporting to replace Ziki. Bergeristain at Manchester City from 2025. Uh, can't lie, this guy looks like um, he looks like someone out of the mafia. <laughs> looks like someone that is running some sort of a cartel. Uh, just look. <laughs> just, uh, 
that look just like I'm going to get this guy eliminated. Um, but listen, it tells me one thing. This is my early prediction. If this is the case, I think we now know who's going to be replacing Pep Guardiola at City when the time eventually comes. And I think this is why Amarim hadn't left Sporting Lisbon. He was close. Remember, he was that close to leaving Sporting Lisbon. And then all of a sudden, no, nah, I'm staying. But when we go back and we look, City apparently had this replacement in place for a little while. Put two and two together. Amarim to Manchester City, I think, is what's going to happen once Pep Guardiola calls it a day, which I don't think is going to be too long. Even if he were to stay for another two years, like it's been rumoured, uh, then the, the, the plans will be in place. Amrim will stay at Sporting for those two years, and when the time comes, Amrim to Manchester City. That is my only prediction on here. You heard it here first. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on that. As for the director, I'll be honest, I, I, I don't know too much. Um, Sporting clearly have been run well in Portugal. What can he bring to Manchester City? I guess we'll see. Um, one thing's for sure, though. It won't be Renato Vega. <laughs> so let me know your thoughts on all of that. Much appreciated. And I will see all of you later on tonight for video number two, as we will be here, to see what is cracking. But let me know your thoughts on England, what you saw last night, as well as the Chelsea trio that have won the manager, uh, that have won the, the, the monthly awards. Let me know down below. Much appreciated. And the Man City new director of football. Subscribe, notification bell on. Check out the socials that were on screen and are in the description. I will see all of you later on for video number two. Have a good one, people. See you tonight. Take care and peace.